All right, and now we are ready to actually go ahead and build our first run. And there are a couple of ways to do that apart from the plans. First way is to create a so-called express run. If you just want to perform a quick test and maybe you don't have a plan for it ready and you just you know, have a couple of test cases you want to quickly run, you can simply select them in the repository. And when you select multiple test cases, there is a run button that becomes available here. This takes you to create your express run. The name here is filled in automatically with the current calendar date, but you can change it to anything else uh, you want to use instead. And you can also define which environment the testing should place in and the milestone it belongs to. I'm going to speak about both of those entities a bit later in one of the next videos, so look out for that. For now, let's just keep in mind that you can configure the environment and milestone for the express run here. Once done, you can hit the start test run button and you're instantly taken to the dashboard of this run you have just created. But now let's go back to another method of creating a test run, and this is done through the test run section. This section, it shows you all the different test runs you have in the system currently. By default, it shows you the active ones, the ones that have not been completed or aborted, but you can change the filter parameters to look up maybe the completed ones to see how you've been performing before, or the ones you have aborted to understand what were the reasons for that. Also, additional filters are available, of course, so you can check which ones uh, maybe are performed in a specific environment if you want to. Also, the search box, just like many other views, is available here. So if you want to look up, uh, for instance, a test run that has been performed on a particular date, you can do that. But now let's go ahead and configure our new test run. The creation form is somewhat similar to the test case creation form, where you also need to fill in the title, which by default automatically is filled in with the current calendar date. But just like with the express run, you can change it to anything else. You can provide additional description define the environment and milestone. And here you will be choosing the plan that we have built on a previous stage. If I want to use a plan I have pre-created before, I would need to choose it from the list and then those cases included in my test plan are going to be added to the test run I'm building now. Also, they are going to be assigned to the person I have defined in the test plan too. But if it happens so that I did not assign anybody in the plan, but still use the plan, I might want to assign all the test cases to someone specific. Or if in the plan some of the test cases were assigned, but some of them weren't, I might want to assign those unassigned ones to a particular person. And I can do that through the default assignee. Moving on next, we have the configuration section. And I'm going to speak about configurations in one of the later videos. But for now, remember that for a test run, you can also specify which configuration you're testing. Now, although I have used the plan as a basis for my test run, it doesn't mean that I'm locked in with those test cases included in the plan and cannot adjust my run. If I hit the Add Cases button, I can still throw something else into the mix and maybe add additional test cases, as well as I can remove the ones I have initially selected via adding a plan. So my test plan, although it serves as a foundation for my test run, it's not a rigidly locked structure. If I want to change something about my run, it is entirely possible, although it's based on the plan. So with all that ready, I can start my run now. I'm now taken back to this screen with all the test runs, and my newest one, the latest one, is going to be shown on the top. It provides me with a bit of information about it, like which environment it takes place, how much time has been spent working on this run so far, and the status of the test cases that are included in it. From the screen, I can also go right away to the dashboard. I can open the wizard. I can create a clone of this run, change some parameters of it, or delete it. However, let's go to the dashboard of the run. And this is just pretty much the same looking as it does for the express run too. So it's a common area. The dashboard shows you the full information about a test run in question. All the test cases it contains, the breadcrumbs for which suite test cases come from, who's the assignee, how much time has been spent for, for the results that were filed for test cases. Of course, for me now, it's pretty empty because I haven't even started working on this test run yet. Any test case 
can be edited right away from here. It can be us assigned to a specific person or unassigned. You can go to wizard on this case. You can view this test case or delete it too. On the right, we have a sidebar that shows the vitals of this test run, like the donor graph with the breakdown for statuses, the completion rate of the run, who started it, the timestamp of creating this test run, the estimation that we have seen before in a uh, test plan. So again, it takes into account all the previous performances of the test cases included into this current run we're looking at. And based on that information, it provides you with an estimation, how long a test run is likely to take based on how long it took in the past, based on how long those test cases have taken in the past. It also is going to show you the current time spent, so the actual time that the engineers have spent so far working on it, and the configurations uh, where the testing should be happening. From here, as you can see on the, on the top of the page, I can open the wizard, which will take me to the first case assigned to me, or unassigned, and I can start working on it. However, before we start working on it, let's take a quick detour to the settings page one more time because it also has uh, a few options for the test runs and the options for you to customize the behavior that is taking place during a test run. All of those options are in the test runs section and I'm going to briefly speak about each one of those. So the first option to fast pass means that if you mark your test case in a run as past, you don't have to leave any additional comment, you're just taken to the next one without any extra actions required. Autocomplete. This option, if turned on, it allows you to automatically complete a run if all the test cases have had a result recorded for them. Now, auto pass is somewhat similar, but it applies to the test cases. As we will see, all the individual steps within a test case can have their own results as well. So if you mark all the test steps to reproduce as passed, this option will allow you to automatically mark an entire test case as passed too. Auto assigning is yet another option that allows you to automatically assign a test case, if it wasn't assigned, to the first person who opens it in the test run. Next option is the failure of the case on a step fail. As I mentioned before, steps to reproduce can have their own statuses, they can have their own results. So with this option turned on, you can make sure that failing a step of a case will automatically result in the failure of an entire case. Next up, we have uh, this option that allows you to add results for cases in closed runs. If I had it turned off, so if I had this box unchecked, that would basically mean that once a run has been completed, I would no longer have a possibility to submit any extra results or maybe send some test cases to be rerun. And uh, one, but, uh, one more option available here is the assignee result lock. That means that only the person that is assigned on a test case can submit results for it. Nobody else, they can, you know, they can open the test case, but they will not be able to submit results for it. So depending on your flow, depending on your processes, you can set those options differently uh, and get the, uh, get the behavior that you prefer. The final option here is the redirection. So where you are taken after you submitted a result for a test case, and there are three options here. You can stay on the same test case you have just submitted a result for, or you can be taken to the first case in a run that still doesn't have any result recorded for it yet. As well as you can just be taken to the next case in suite within a run. So having those options in mind, let's go back to the test runs and start working on my test cases. To start working on a test case, you can just hit its name or just hit open wizard button on the top and it will take you to the wizard, which is a step-by-step -step guide for an engineer to go through the test cases. As you can see below the title of the test case, I have the results for the case itself. But if I scroll further and get to the steps to reproduce section, I'm going to see that every step itself can have its own result. So I can mark my steps as passed, failed, blocked, or skipped. I can add the comments and attachments to each individual step. However, since I have the option to fail a case when a step fails turned off, 
failing a step does not result in failure of the case. I would need to fail the case manually still. However, on the contrary, if I had that option turned on, as soon as I have failed a step, my entire case will get marked as a failed one. Now for this one, I'm just going to mark it past. And again, since I have the fast pass option turned on in the settings, I'm instantly taken to the next case in the wizard, to the next case I need to work on. For this one though, let's file a different result. So I'm going to pass the first step, I'm going to pass the second, but I'm going to fail the third, and then I'm getting blocked. So on the fourth step, I'm recording a blocked. In here, I can write a comment Maybe something went wrong, you know. And now I'm going to fail an entire case. As soon as I do that, I'm seeing this splash screen that allows me to add additional information about what went wrong. I can leave a comment. Component does not work. I can also adjust the time that I have actually spent working on it. Maybe I spent not just 40 some seconds, but rather 10 minutes, making sure that it doesn't work. So I can adjust the time and record 10, uh, 10 minutes uh, that I was working on this test case in fact. If I want to also attach a file, maybe it's a screenshot, maybe it's a console output, maybe it's some sort of a text file, anything goes, I can just drop a file here. And at this stage is when I can create a defect. I'm going to speak about defects in more detail in the next video. But for now, let's just keep in mind that this is when I will be creating a defect if I found an issue during a run. For now, let's just add a result. And since I have the auto assign option turned on, it automatically took me to the next test case in the run and assigned it to me. So I can proceed and keep working on those cases. So I've filed all the results now. I'm taken back instantly to the dashboard, and now, of course, it shows the lively, uh, the live updated information. It shows me the actual state of the test run with a breakdown for statuses, how I perform, what's the completion rate, and so on and so forth. All of the results I have recorded can be reviewed at any point, so if I want to return back to it, I can click the result. It will show me the steps and the results I have filed for individual steps, as well as the overall test case. For the failed one, I will see which defect has been created as a result of it. And in fact, since I have created a defect during a run, I now have the defects tab showing up over on the top. This tab is going to collect all the defects that have been filed during this particular run. So if I have multiple, if I have more than one defect, all of them will be shown here. The next tab here is the team stats where all the assignees of the test cases in this run are going to be shown together with the information about the time they spent working and the results that have filed on the test cases. Also, there is a graph showing the progression of this particular assignee through the test cases assigned to them. Going back to the defects, I can of course see also the information uh, about who reported the defect. I can go to the defect using the link and I can see in what status it is. From the context menu, it is possible to view the defect, change its status to in progress or invalid, change some parameters of it, or delete that defect altogether. Going back to the uh, going back to the runs, my run actually got automatically completed because I had that option turned on, and so as soon as I have filed all the results for my run, it has been marked completed automatically. However, if you know if uh, as a manager, I go back into the run review it, and I do not agree with one of the results. Maybe it was a mistake by engineer rather than a failure. I can ask them to do it again by hitting the retest case button. Now my run becomes active again. And in fact, my engineer will need to go into the test case and perform it again. So that's what I would do. I would try it again. And this time everything went exactly as it was expected, and I pass it this on the second attempt. My dashboard shows me now that there is more than one result filed for this test case. And going into the review of this result, I will see that there has been the first attempt where the failure has been recorded, the second result was a retest, and the third result 
finally was a success. And again, the complete button is no longer appearing here. So as soon as I submitted the final result, my run gets marked completed automatically. One great feature also that is available to you is sharing a report with third party stakeholders who are not members of your account whatsoever. So you might want to provide them visibility into how you are progressing through testing, but not necessarily let them see the repository, let them see all the different things and entities within your account. So instead of doing that, you can just share a report, them, share a report with them by creating this public link and sending that link to them. What they are going to see is going to be the same screen with the dashboard where they will be able to review the results but you know they will not be able to dig into the test cases themselves or see what else you have in the account. They will be limited to just this very run you have shared with them. You can also export your uh, test run into a spreadsheet if that ever needs to happen for you. And if you want to change the parameters of a test run at any point, you can edit it. So that pretty much sums up about the test run. In the next video, we're going to speak more about the defects and how those work. So stay tuned and switch to the next video.